Hello, everybody. Good evening. Thank you so much for being here. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Salim Colón, a 2020 Neiman Fellow. And together with my fellow fellow, Andras uh, Petho, had the great privilege to co-chair the process where each Neiman class is responsible for choosing a journalist or a news organization that displays conscience and integrity in journalism. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Special welcome to Lipman House, to all guests, and especially to our guest of honor, Carla Minet, Executive Director, and Omaya Sosa, co-founder and journalist of Centro de Periodismo Investigativo de Puerto Rico. Uh, in English, Center for Investigative Journalism of Puerto Rico. <laughs> uh, when we began the, the process to select uh, this year's honorary, we asked the class to nominate uh, journalists or organizations that represented the values of conscience and integrity. And uh, we began our deliberations with uh, 25 names, which included both individuals and institutions. Uh, our first part of the selection process uh, started online, thanks to the work of our fellow Oliver Roder, uh, our co-co-chair. And uh, thank you, Oli. Thank you also for thank you also for fixing my my tie. I mean, so you, before this event, you you served the, the this award in multiple capacities. So this uh, process allowed the class to narrow the discussion and. Uh, as good journalists would do, question the choices that uh, came up during this uh, selection. And after a fortunately peaceful and fruitful process, the class voted to award this year's uh, Louis M. Lyons Award to the Centro, uh, Centro de Periodismo uh, Investigativo de Puerto Rico, or as Sally already said, as Los, Los Gringos said, the Center for Investigative Reporting of Puerto Rico. <laughs> <clears throat> This choice, as you all know, made me extremely proud to not only be a journalist, an Iman Fellow, but to be a Puerto Rican, AKA Boricua. The work of CPI does, does had had a, a direct impact on the lives of all Puerto Ricans that live on the island or in the mainland US. When you are in Puerto Rico, almost every conversation includes a reference to BM before Maria, or AM after Maria. Trying to put into context and show the contrast of life before and after the devastating hurricane of September 2017. BM before Maria, CPI was becoming a force to be reckoned, to be reckoned with and their lessons and experiences since they officially launched in April of 2008. This prepared them for what they had been facing as journalists since, since September of 2017. Just a week after Hurricane Maria made landfall in Puerto Rico, CPI was the only news organization that was able to confirm that there were inconsistencies in the government reports of the death, of the death toll caused by the storm. You all know the videos of when Trump visited Puerto Rico and his celebration when he was there of an achievement of a low death toll because of the work of federal and local government response to the emergency. Seven weeks after the first report, Omaya and her colleague, Jennifer Wiskovich, published new information where they were able to independently confirm that the death toll was higher than what the government was reporting. CPI became the leading voice in holding the government accountable after the storm in the mismanagement of the emergency. The ongoing investigations by CPI forced them to once again get on a legal battle with the government of Puerto Rico in order to, for them to release official documents related to the deaths after the storm. Hurricane Maria's dead, a special investigation published a year after the storm made landfall by CPI, Associated Press, and Quartz, where our very own Ana Campoy was the lead journalist for Quartz, is the only record that identifies 487 victims of the storm. And like the special investigation points out, and I quote, many families say that the real cause of death was government inaction. Uh, CPI has been around for more than 10 years, becoming the much needed watchdog of the government of Puerto Rico constantly promoting and pushing for transparency and conducting 
in-depth reporting about economic, uh, political, and fiscal issues that affect the people of Puerto Rico. Uh, not only CPI has fought in court for the constitutional right of, of access to information, but they have also become a training center for journalists in Puerto Rico and the Caribbean. In December of 2017, Executive Director Carla Minet said that uh, this decade of learning has prepared our team for a new stage, which is particularly important given the challenging moments that our island is going through. And uh, that new stage turned out to be especially challenging. During the summer of 2019, the journalists of CPI changed the politics of Puerto Rico as we had known them. Known them. They were able to access and get um, exclusive access to 889 pages of a newly discovered Telegram chat of the now ousted governor of Puerto Rico, Ricardo Rosselló. The content of those conversations enraged Puerto Ricans who took to the streets. For the first time, I was actually talking to Omaya about this. In Puerto Rico, it's extremely rare that people go out to the streets and protest so massively. So this was a whole new event, a whole new era uh, for Puerto Ricans, and it was thanks to the work of, of CPI um, and their journalism. We all know how that ended. Puerto Ricans had taken to the streets before, like I mentioned, but never in recent history we had seen a protest of this magnitude with such a strong outcome. This was the best display of the impact of journalism holding accountable those in power. This moment in Puerto Rican history will be remembered as the summer of 2019, or like we say in Spanish, El Verano de 2019. The work of all the journalists at the Center for Investigative Journalism in Puerto Rico is more important than ever to continue uncovering corruption, mismanagement, and abuse of power by local polling stations and institutions. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm not as familiar with uh, Puerto Rico as uh, Sally. I, I might be able to find it on a map, as it, apparently it seems that that's being required for journalists <laughs> these days. But I, I still find the work of CPI that it's, it resonates with a lot of us uh, around the world. Uh, as we all know, the news, is just, news industry is struggling almost everywhere, but in you know, the more fortunate corners of the world, sometimes you can see that organizations are launched or even operated uh, with the help of uh, generous philanthropists and uh, with budgets of millions or even tens of millions of dollars. And of course, that's great. I think we should be all grateful for that. But it's always much more inspiring to see when you see journalists achieving amazing impact with uh, very few resources, and only through their persistence, intelligence, and, uh, and hard work. I think CPI is one of the best examples for that, and we are honored to have you here with us and accepting our award. So to end, on behalf of the Neiman class of 2020, congratulations, Carla, Omaya, and the whole team at Centro de Periodismo Investigativo for the Louis M. Lyons Award for conscience and integrity in your work in journalism. Thank you.